Good afternoon, my Renews Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for December 2, 2024. And in the news this afternoon, cops give woman Tuesday noon deadline to come in. The Trelawney police have given Sylvia Montague Brown until noon on Tuesday to turn herself in as they continue investigations into her husband's death. Her brother, 60-year-old gardener Lester Judge Montague, was on Monday charged with murder in connection with the killing. We have moved her from a person of interest to a suspect. We expect her to bring herself into the police, commander of the Trelawney Police Division, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Winston Milton told the news on Monday. Montague Brown has not been seen since the residents discovered the lifeless blood and blood-drenched body of 59-year-old fisherman David Brown in bushes close to their matrimonial home on Saturday morning. The body, which had multiple wounds, was wrapped in a white bed sheet. It was discovered on a sheet of zinc close to the couple's house. The SP Milton said that the Browns were engaged in a domestic dispute on Friday night. Threats were allegedly made during the fracas, and Montague Brown reported the incident to the police. Cops visited the couple's home in an effort to quell the disturbance. However, sometime after 7 Saturday morning, the police were again contacted by residents who reportedly heard a commotion coming from the couple's house. Neighbors said the Browns had frequently fought. Like much of the country, the parish has seen its fair share of domestic disputes that have led to loss of life. For example, in the first quarter of last year, the Trelawney police charged Anthony Finlay, also known as a boy blue and a body man of Clarkstone with the shooting death of two-year-old Jerome Campbell. This after they responded to a shooting in Mack Hill District, Clarkstone, about 8 p.m. on Sunday, March 12. Investigations revealed that Finley and a male cousin were embroiled in a conflict. Finley reportedly left the scene and returned with a firearm, which was used to open fire at his cousin, who was seated in a Honda motor car. It was reported that the bullet missed the intended target and hit the two-year-old boy who was seated in the rear of the car. He was rushed to Falmouth Public General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Finley fled the scene but was subsequently nabbed by lawmen during a stop and a search operation in the parish. During a community meeting that followed the grisly incident, both DSP Milton and a member of parliament for Trelawney Northern, Tova Hamilton, appealed to residents to desist from using violence to settle domestic disputes. David Brown's killing pushed Trelawney's murder tally to 24 for 2023, seven fewer than the 31 reported at the end of 2022. KSAMC to continue efforts to combat attacks on homeless people. Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, says the municipality will be working closely with law enforcement agencies this year to combat deadly attacks on homeless people in the corporate area. Several homeless people were killed last year and others seriously wounded in violent attacks. Speaking with the news on Monday at a function to feed more than 400 homeless people at the Sir William Grant Park in downtown Kingston, Mayor Williams appealed to people to desist from harming the vulnerable. We have been observing uh, um, the issue of violence against vulnerable groups, against homeless persons, and it's something that we have been committed to um, reading from our society. And we have, over the years, been appealing to, to persons to desist from this um, practice. And I believe that, based on the, the, the reports that we get, I believe that this, this, our effort has borne fruits and we are seeing less and less, or we're getting less and less reports about abuse to, um, towards homeless persons. So it's, but we will continue to, our efforts to, to appeal to persons to desist from this and we continue our collaboration with the police in, 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 in helping to rid the society of this um, practice. 1,393 people murdered in Jamaica in 2023. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is reporting that 1,393 people were murdered in Jamaica last year. According to the 2023 Serious Crimes Statistics, murders declined by 7.8% year-on-year. The latest update published on Monday by the police 
shows that 118 fewer homicides were committed in 2023 than during 2022. The police have revised to 1,511 the number of people who were murdered at the end of 2022. Initially, the JCF reported that 1,498 persons were murdered. Checks by the news outlined that a cause of death can be upgraded to murder after relevant investigations are carried out. The St. James Police Division, with 187 murders, led six other divisions with 100 murders or more in 2023. Westmoreland, 117, St. Andrew South, 123, St. Catherine North, 120, Clarendon, 104, and the St. Catherine South, 103, round out the other five divisions with over 100 murders. It should be noted that only Kingston Western, Hanover, St. Anne, and Clarendon had an increase in murders of all 19 police divisions year on year. St. Andrew North and Portland held a firm with 59 and 14 murders respectively. Shootings across all divisions recorded a decline, so two reports of injuries. Rape across the divisions also recorded a 17.5% decline. The JCF is also reporting a total of 780 robberies, a 15.3% decline when compared to 921 in 2022. Mobay stakeholders renew call for relocation of Boga sewage treatment pond. There are renewed calls for the National Water Commission to find another location for the sewage treatment pond that now takes up what many regard as a prime space for commercial development in Boga Montego Bay. The ponds occupy roughly 60 acres of land in the tourism mecca. With the city's urban center now saturated, Montego Bay's Deputy Mayor, Councillor Richard Vernon, is among stakeholders who would like the NWC facility relocated to make way for expansion. He wants an assessment done to determine the practicality of relocating both the sewage ponds and the sometimes problematic retirement land fill. He is convinced that the two facilities, like the Pie River Cemetery, which is also located at Bogue, have limited the effective expansion of the city. In hindsight, city planners may regret the former decisions. Nonetheless, we must look to the future. This future must include a feasibility study for the relocation of the sewage plant and the landfill on the basis of environmental preservation and socio-economic enhancement as the city core expands, Vernon told the news. A key feature of sustainable development is leveling developmental efforts across developmental dimensions. We must learn this, but most importantly, practice it, he added. President of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Oral Heaven, said he would throw his support behind any move to relocate the ponds in order to facilitate the commercial growth. If there is a move to relocate and use the land for business development and commercial activities, then yes, I personally would support it, Heaven said. There has been a suggestion that the book operations could be handled at another NWC treatment facility in downtown Montego Bay. The National Water Commission's Bevin Avenue sewage plant is already properly suited, subjected to appropriate upgrades to be the natural facility for relocation of sewage treatment activities, recommended a Montego Bay-based stakeholder who asked not to be identified by name. The facility at Bogue was established in the 1990s on the periphery of what was then a largely underdeveloped section of the city. At the time, residents in nearby communities expressed a concern that their quality of life would be negatively impacted by noxious odor from the plant. The area has now attracted both a commercial and residential development, and while the stench remains a concern for some, one resident who lives nearby claimed that there is only a problem when there is heavy rainfall. Residents of Bog and other communities are also adversely affected by smoke when there is a fire at the retirement landfill. As with the ponds, there have long been suggestions that the landfill should be relocated. NRCA serves enforcement and warning notices on developer for sewage flow onto public streets. The Natural Resources Conservation Authority has served enforcement and warning notices on the developer of a housing complex at the 5 Graham Heights, St. Andrew, after consistent complaints 
from neighbors about an overflow of sewage water onto the public road that is posing a public health risk. For more than a year, residents as well as the pedestrians have been subjected to the health risk as well as the stench of the sewage water flowing from the Valhalla complex which comprises apartments and the townhouses. Except for about two days over the just-ended holidays, the water has been running from the complex onto the street, making life for us uncomfortable, one resident told the news on Monday. Another resident noted that many people walking to work each morning are forced to jump over the stream of sewage water as it crosses the road from the complex and runs about 50 meters down to a culvert. It has become so bad now that just the other day I heard the people who walk up to work saying, we're reaching a house now, he said. One guy stepping it the other day and almost fell. I am now suffering the inconvenience of heat as I have to be closing my door and windows because of the stench, he added. He also noted that the constant water flow has contributed to erosion of the heavily traversed road surface, leaving a larger pothole that had to be patched recently as it was proving a hazard to motorists. Attempts by the news over the weekend to contact the developer were unsuccessful. A third resident said he had reported the problem to the National Environment and the Planning Agency in October 2022 and action was taken by the authority to have it corrected. It stopped for a while but there were intermittent instances of the water flowing onto the street again. However, last December the problem worsened and another report was made to Nepo, the resident said. In response, Nepo said it sent an enforcement officer who again inspected the site and reported that while the system was drawn by a cesspool truck about an hour before his arrival, an engineer would need to examine it and advise on a way forward that will facilitate seizing the discharge permanently. But with the problem persisting, NRCA on December 22, 2023, served the notices citing the developer for improper operation of a treatment plant for the discharge of sewage effluent and the saying that the discharge of improperly treated sewage effluent is an unacceptable risk to public health and the natural resources in the area as it contains pathogens that may cause bacterial diseases upon contact by members of the public. The authority also instructed the developer to immediately cease all operations of the treatment plant for the discharge of sewage effluent, submitted to the authority a remediation plan to adequately address the contamination of the area within seven days of the effective date of the notice and undertake remediation of the area based on the approved plan to the satisfaction of the authority within the timelines approved in the remediation plan. Additionally, NRCA told the developer to apply for a license for the reconstruction or alteration of the sewage treatment plant as well as the license for the operation of the plant and the discharge of treatment effluent into the environment within 30 days of the date of the notice.